Okay, um, we haven't gotten a sprain recently. Oh, we missed a secondary cache I could have gotten to look for. Another food cache. We'll come back to check for it later. Uh, first off, uh, we just need to keep going up the hill here. Um, there's, uh, pot there's two potential caches within a very short uh, span of each other up here. Uh, ooh, excuse me. That's uh, dinner pizza coming back up. Um, and they can be very close to each other, and I think one's food and one's firewood. Um, if I remember correctly, it is right up here. There should be a maple sapling to guide my way. It'll be right over this ridge a little bit. And off to our right, methinks. There's literally no reason to come up here. Um, if you're ever in Mystery Lake. Ah, there she is! Space Jeans, your comment fits. Your comment fits. It was a bit early, but it fits. <laughs> We have ourselves a hatchy! I think this is the food cache, sadly. I was hoping for the firewood. Wait, wait, which one's which? Oh, no, 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 well, I don't know. Hard to say. Hard to say. I can't tell which one this is. Anyway, this is what a hatch looks like, and this is a potential hatch location. So if you've never found one before, this is what they look like. Ooh! Yes! Alright guys, how much fire would we got in here? I need anything right now. <clears throat> There's a lantern. Ooh, a high condition lantern too. I've never yet found a fire no wait, I lie. I found a firewood cache once. Not here though. Different location. All the caches are designed a little bit differently. Um, the food caches look a lot like the abandoned preppers cache that you find uh, on the way to TWM. Um, oh, all these fire logs. That's what I love about these. Oh, I didn't need that newsprint. Well, we're going to drop that. Oh, there's some food. I don't think Frey is going to be able to- Oh, so there's some MRE, there's some rifle ammunition. Much better than a stinking food cache. Food caches are literally just boatloads of food. And they're just annoying. Um... Yeah, really, um... For the average player, uh, people complain about Stalker mainly due to the wolves. The loot, I remember when I first started playing Stalker and I was like, holy cow, there's so little loot. And then I started realizing how much loot there is. Because when I was originally playing before, um, I never, um, left Mystery Lake in my first run ever. Well, first long run ever. I eternally camped out in Mystery Lake. And so, um... We're going to head back to Trappers now because I was going to go to HRV next. Uh, we'll cook us up a big pot of water. Yay, firewood cash! Anyway. Um, where was I? Something, something. Something. So, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So I had never left uh, Mystery Lake. So on that first big run of mine um, in Voyager with Voyager loot levels granted they were tuned a little bit lower than what they give out now So I think they give out more loot now in Voyager than they did back in those days when I was playing uh, I had never left Mystery Lake So I was like there's very little loot um, Oh, there's a cairn up here. I've never been up here for this cairn uh, So you know the loot levels were like oh man, there's not much loot, but when you actually start to spread your wings and realize there's more to the game than just a singular region and that it's okay to travel between regions and it's not that dangerous. In fact, it's behooves you to do so. Um, but yeah, it, it, it's there's a, so much loot. Like, I did a, a test run in Pilgrim and I overloaded myself after visiting just Trappers and Camp Office in Pilgrim and I'm like, why is there such a need for this much loot? Who plays Pilgrim because they don't get enough loot? I, I, I'm concerned. This is this is so much loot. I'm gonna get a sprain in a couple of seconds, guys. Um. Anyway, and then you know Voyager still has very plentiful loot. And when I first picked up Stalker, it's like this isn't hardly any loot at all. But it is. It's honestly quite a bit of loot. Um, it's a very fair amount of loot. 
especially if you visit every region. I've visited every region, and I have a stockpile of loot in every region. We've yet to visit Scruffy's Cave and Desolation Point. That's the only place we've not gone to visit, and that's because I was too tired and too cold when we were last in DP, because that's where I started. Uh, if we go back and look, this run started in DP. Yeah, uh, Digby, um, Stalker is good on the loot when you can stockpile it. Um, Long-term survival's odd right now. Uh, this is a discussion I've been meaning to have for a long time uh, to float with the community, but I've yet to broach it really in any particularly good way. Um, I'll probably make a video on it at some point, but right now, to me anyway, the Long Dark uh, Sandbox mode is completely unfinished due to one aspect. And that aspe aspect, sadly, is the lack of a late game. The early game is defined exclusively by the fact you're naked, you're afraid, not the TV show, that thing sucks, and you have nothing. You're literally out of everything. And so you have to start grabbing stuff and everything, including the cold wants to kill you, and you can't do anything. And so it's terrible. And then you have the late early game wherein you actually have collected several tools and stuff, but you still don't have like... Uh, good good gear or anything clothing wise or whatever, but you can start getting yourself food and stuff So you're a little bit better off, you know um, And then you have the early mid game which is where you begin to set yourself up for self-sufficiency You're probably still relying a bit on processed foods uh, maybe there's still several regions you've got to hit to completely clear them out of loot, etc, etc. But you're getting set up, and then there's the late mid-game, which is the final point in the sandbox at the moment, which is where you're completely set up for self-sustainability. The only time you're going to start feeling a crunch is, um, is when you no longer have easy access to cloth and repairs, and you're going to have to start relying on beachcombing. Uh, which is going to limit you to making runs to Coastal Highway every 20 or so days, or Desolation Point. Anyway, um, so there's th there's really no compelling late game currently. If you go through lots of posts on both the official forums and the Steam community... Uh, <laughs> Space Jeans. <laughs> oh goodness, that's a good suggestion, but... Um, you know, there's no there's no compelling late game. You go through the posts on the forums and everyone says once you reach day 100 or later... Guys, do you know why there's the sound of a bear over here? If I end up getting mauled to an invisible bear, I'm going to be super stinking ticked. There's not a bear that makes a trip through here. And uh, there's been many a time I've come through here where that ghost bear exists, and it's annoying. Ah. <sighs> Scares the piss out of me every time. There's some firewood I left behind over there. It is. Oh, Freya's hungry. Let's eat. Anyway, um, what could be a late game? All right, um, something that would be a late game. All right, consider the early game. What makes the early game compelling? Right. Uh, speaking specifically. What? Are you telling me, Hinterland? There was a bear there. I walked right by him. Completely invisible. Could have gotten mauled by an invisible bear. And you're telling me that I can turn away and he's going to show his fat, cute little face right up. Just... Good thing I have security with me. Seriously, though, there's been a ghost bear there thousands of times that I've come past and I've never had a problem. I've walked through that exact spot where the bear was walking through and where you heard the sounds earlier. Thousands of times with ghost bear sounds and never been injured or mauled or anything. And then, um... 21%, 38%, 62%. And then, I've never seen him show up like that, but now I've turned around and he's there. It's just... Ugh, why, Gam? Why? Yeah, I know. I've seen the post for the old, old uh, for the ghost bear before. I'm sure it's probably an existing problem. 
buried in the code for how we're sidetracking from the original discussion so i'll get back to it shortly for how um both the unity framework and how hinterland programmed it specifically to handle animal spawning um so tis what it is anyway so think about the early game um yeah i know it's a free bear hide but i don't want bear hide right now Yeah, I know. Um, I'll discuss the, the current borked animal AI in a bit. But anyway, think about mechanically, um, from a game design aspect, what makes the early game compelling? You're fresh off a busted up plane, obviously, as the premise of the game, with nothing. And you need to survive. Obviously, that's the goal of the game, is survival. And Sandbox is geared towards endless survival. So the early game is compelling because you are at death's doorstep, even if not super close to death's doorstep, it's like, you know, nothing is, nothing is insured, nothing is guaranteed. It's very dangerous. Your next step could theoretically be your last. You, you have enough to survive for a short period of time, but you feel compelled to gear up. What makes the mid game compelling? If you think about it from a game design standpoint, you've finally gotten that gear, you're satisfied with what you've acquired, and you're now able to sustain yourself, and the mid-game varies person by person as to how long it typically lasts, and you know, how long they get enjoyment out of the mid-game, uh, for whatever purposes or goals they hope to achieve. And it's still compelling then because you're setting yourself up for survival. Um, you're getting, ah, there it is. And it was coming sooner or later. Anyway, so that's that's what makes the mid game pretty compelling. Is you have some goals and things for for uh, to compel you to continue to survive. Primary one collecting food, and the secondary one is remaining warm. Even though now you have gear that should help be keeping you warm, sans interloper for throughout the majority of the days, even as the days drag on and it gets colder. So the question would be, from a design standpoint and from a, a a game mechanic standpoint and from a player's perspective standpoint what would make a compelling late game what would challenge the status quo the status quo is you're set up for survival survival has become easy you've gotten into a rut where you can just easily survive you can fish you can hunt you can do whatever um it's it's after a time, boredom is what typically kills people's runs. They've done it all and they can continue to do it all and they're unchallenged in that aspect. There's no expansion or stretching of the player to continue to do anything per se. Wow, I was carrying 22 pounds in wood alone on those fire logs. Um, so there's no compelling standpoint on that aspect. How many painkillers do I have? Let's see. Oh, we got plenty. We'll take some. So we have to think about what would provide a compelling framework. Um, I came in here to grab my pot. Um, no, I'm not. I, I mean, we're in Canada and they just legalized it, so it's technically okay. Anyway, we're going um, to spot to do our fires for something. So. Well, yeah, that's true, Zanti. Um, you know, but think about it. Uh, you know, again, what what do people complain about? You know, that that once they get set up, there's no compelling reason to continue or run uh, ad infinitum. So, what would challenge the status quo from a gameplay standpoint to create a sense of urgency or desperation in the player um, about their current status in the game world? So, thinking about that. You know, it's like what would what would compel me, or make it more difficult for me, etc. You know, to survive once I'm geared up, once I'm warm enough, once I can fend off wolves in the environment. Well, obviously, we know Hinterland is eventually looking at redoing the animal AI and implementing wolf pack behavior at some point. Um, we don't know when that's going to happen, if ever. But at some point, that would be something that would be beneficial. Can you still start fires under here, or are they still nerf that? Oh, they've st oh, no, you can't. How many fires can I start under here? It depend on how many I can fit. I need room for, like, a lot of fires. 
So, you know, you have to come up with some mechanics. Um, something that would compel players. And make it more difficult to survive. Um, while at the same time not making it too hard to survive, you know. So, some things I've thought of that might be interesting were, uh, would be, of course, wolf pack behavior. Um... But, uh, you know, wolf pack behavior would be one, one step uh, towards that. Um, you'd have wolf pack behavior. Uh, you could have uh, animal migration, so you're technically docile animals, such as rabbits. Well, maybe not the rabbits, I don't know, we could leave the rabbits alone, but like, pretty much all wildlife, including predators, uh, just disappears from the region for an extended period of time, say like 20 or 30 days. Um, You know, for a long period of time, so it's no longer economically viable to stay in that region for food purposes. Now, that technically wouldn't be very immersive for gameplay, because you could just leave and go to another region, obviously. Um, but, you know, we need, we need to... Uh, well, I say we need. I like to be thinking of something, because even uh, Raf himself has said he'd like to have something more compelling for a late game. Uh, he doesn't like the status of the sandbox where it is right now. Um, so something compelling in the late game to make it more difficult to survive as in forcing you to go out of your comfort zone, forcing you more into the path of predators, etc, making it harder to eat, etc, beyond what the game already throws to you in the much later days when you start running out of resources um, and such to make an end game or at least a late game anyway, not necessarily an end game but a late game more compelling more dangerous and more thrilling so it's not as boring But yeah, there are plenty of self-imposed challenges you can do, that's for sure. Um, there's all sorts of things we, you can do on that end. Um, yeah, that would be something, Xantip. The more injuries you get, obviously, the... Really? The hatch is going to be quicker? I guess because it's frozen. Normally the knife's quicker, but whatever. Huh. Have you ever tried the intestinal parasites challenge? You know what? We're smelly, right? We're a little bit smelly, not terribly smelly. I wonder. Do you think we can drag that wolf down here? I know I just wasted time, but there we go. We'll go for one first. Uh, the frostbite challenge, I think, is where you get as much frostbite as you can get, um, which gets you down to how many times can you get frostbite? I'm trying to remember. Alright guys, I'm about to be as smelly as smelly gets. Oh, I'm not- I'm very not rested though. So... How much? We got 47 minutes on the fire, so we'll probably have to refresh that fire in a minute. Um, but yeah, there's the frostbite challenge, uh, there's the cabin fever challenge, or if you haven't seen it yet, I'll be doing it eventually, the dead man's challenge. Um, it's a custom, uh, custom mode, you know, done through the custom settings where you create your own game mode. Um, and the settings are absolutely brutal.
All right, we nearly got our water done. Four minutes till ready on the venison. minutes left on this campfire. Oh my, I'm pretty heavy. I'm trying to get all this uh, decaying food off of me. 54 minutes. Let's use sticks to get us up there. Oh, reclaimed wood. I'll get us up there. And we got a big, nice, stellar wind up there. What condition did we get for that torch? Oh, stop notifying me of things I'm not interested in. Um, guys, why can't I hardly whack? Is it because I have 120 pounds of? Just junk weight on Freya. Walt's up there somewhere and I know he smells me. I'm a very smelly boy. Oh, poo bots. Guys, 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 I'm not gonna make it in time! Ah! <laughs> okay, we can move a little bit faster. Guys, he's still coming. <laughs> I totally can't shake a wolf if he comes at me. <laughs> 